I really appreciate Greg Pallast, who's worked for ABC News, BBC, you name it, syndicated columnist, joining us. He also writes for The Observer, one of the biggest newspapers in Europe. GregPallast.com is his site. He's a best-selling author. I wanted to get him on because he explained in 2002 when the documents leaked that there's a plan to implode Europe and the U.S. with the hedge funds next and sign us onto their derivatives debt. And he decried the derivatives moves in the late 1990s as well, bipartisanly. He was a former federal uh, fraud investigation uh, specialist at the highest levels of these brokerage firms and big banks. So he saw it coming. He's the first guy other than economist uh, George Humphrey, my friend here in Austin, city council member at the time, uh, who also broke it down. But Greg Palace got the documents. What they've done to the third world, they plan to do here. What they've done to Greece, they're going to do to every other country in Europe, and then us. Whatever they can get away with, they'll do. Uh, and now they said they want 10% of the Cyprus Bank's money. And, and now they're saying 15% in Italy and 15% in Spain. To set the precedent to just steal your money right off the top, unelected EU bureaucrats. So I wanted to get him on uh, here today. They put an arrest warrant out a few years ago for him. He was covering the FEMA uh, trailer areas in Louisiana falling apart. And they said it was terrorism to film a government installation. The arrest warrant was issued. It got media coverage. And so they didn't arrest him, but and it got dropped. But it shows the mindset of the system where we can't hand out magazines now in Austin until I went down there and threatened to sue. They said, you can't hand your magazines out anywhere in this downtown. You can't have InfoWars bumper stickers. It shows what the higher ups want. And if we lay down, they're going to win. The, the fake instinct to grovel and lick boots is going to bring us to hell. Now, Greg Palace to gregpalace.com. Uh, I want to get your take on exactly what's happening, where this is moving, uh, and uh, where uh, the future of this is going to go. Greg, thanks for joining us. You're very welcome, Alex. I'm really glad to be back with you, especially because when I wrote in, in, a, in Vice Magazine, a giant uh, international uh, column uh, of space that I have, that the Alex Jones show is one of the most intelligent, most informative uh, platforms for real journalism in the United States. And a lot of my lefty friends were like, what are you talking about, Alex Jones? And I said, yes, listen with your mind open and you will get information you won't hear anywhere else. I don't have to agree with everything you say, Alex. It doesn't matter. This what a blessing to have this platform. So I appreciate being on it. Oh, no, I appreciate you, but I mean, listen, they do that to anybody that gets off the controlled left-right uh, establishment fake debate plantation because they're scared. You know, uh, anybody who's starting to really have an effect like yourself or others, they will attack that person in the press and say, don't go near this person because they're afraid our ideas are going to be picked up. In fact, I just have to take a couple seconds to mention that obviously I am the mainstream outside the United States, the BBC, the biggest uh, English language television. Let's talk about Piers Morgan briefly. Yeah, uh, yeah, because and what happened was is five of his employees arrested now. I mean, you know, when is he going to get arrested? Go ahead. Uh, well, as soon as he steps back in England, this is amazing to me. And I have to say, thank bless you, sir, for getting in his face. Piers Morgan, um, as a BBC television reporter, and as a reporter for The Guardian, the biggest uh, English language paper in the nation, much bigger than, than the New York Times, uh, I did an undercover investigation in which I found that there was a lockup between Tony Blair, the Clinton White House, big power companies to basically seize the uh, utility assets of the planet. And I uncovered this, including Enron, got inside, did undercover reporting, splashed all over, almost brought down the Blair government. People went to prison. But... Piers Morgan, who was running a, a filth rag called The Mirror, uh, went after me, calling me a liar, coming up, smearing me. He puts evil. you on the cover. And, and listen, you never toot your horn. You, more than anybody, helped bring down Enron, God bless you, who yeah. was raping the Californians, what, some weeks with, of over a billion dollars of extra charges? That's right. And what I always hated is that while we got Enron, I thought that it wasn't a bad apple. It was a whole damn rotten tree, yeah. rotten branch. And so what happened was is that Piers Morgan even went so far as to – as you know, I was on the cover as a sex maniac of the of the uh, mirror, just making up this stuff about Greg. You know, I, hey, listen, I, I don't mind a little action, but you know, they I was smeared left and right uh, by Piers Morgan, a complete liar. And then I well, a sex him. maniac's better than a uh, hacker uh, hacking you know, innocent I'll people. You know, uh, maniac maybe. Uh, but the uh, but the thing is, I we also uncovered that Piers Morgan had done insider trading, stuff that in the United States, you'd be breaking rocks on a chain game. 
he he would trade on stocks. Listen to this. This guy would trade. Piers Morgan would, as the editor of the paper, find out what his columnists were going to recommend in the business pages the next day or next week to buy. He would buy it in advance, knowing that the stock would be pumped and would go up. It was automatic. He was pocketing hundreds of thousands of pounds in his own pocket. You know, in the U.S., I mean, it'd be that's absolute uh, jail time. I've never heard of anyone doing that in the U.S. without jail time. They let him get away with it. He lied on his visas. The uh, U.S. State Department, including the current uh, Obama administration, allowed him to come into the United States, despite the fact that it says that uh, if you've committed what would be a felony crime in the United States, which he committed, if you committed a felony crime in the United States, uh, then... Uh, you uh, you can't get a visa to work here. You can't get a green card. Doesn't he doing? fit the perfect MO of probably MI5 or MI6? Worse, because he uses their information. In other words, he got a lot of information. So he's a guy above it. He's one of like the master gophers who's actually playing the agencies. But I mean, when I met him, right. I was like, whoa, this is this is the real deal right here. I mean, this is and, this is like Count Dracula. By the way, I do know that he really doesn't like you, Alex. <laughs> I got the inside. But, oh, really? What did they say? But, but not, well, they, I'll, I'll tell you later, but they, they're really not happy with any with either of us. But the thing is, they're really upset with me because I'm from his establishment, from the BBC. And the other thing he did was he fabricated reports on the war in Iraq. He literally took fabricated photos and he got caught. Supposedly, photos of soldiers in Iraq, they were taken in, in sunny England. And he faked these photos and when he got caught, he said, well, they were kind of like the real thing. Can you imagine faking war photos? I got to hear them. And I know they hate me. They were crying and freaking out. You know, they say they beat me in the debate. I, it was actually blew up in their face. They're scared. But, uh, but before we get into I Cyprus, just, but I mean, I, I mean, this hatchet man thing is important. What from your sources is Morgan saying? OK, he's just really upset with you. I mean, he's reading everything we're saying about him. Hi, Piers. I'm sure he's monitoring. Hey, <laughs> Piers. Um, and, you know, he's tried so hard. To set me up to ruin my career, to say, you know, I'm a sex maniac. And hey, listen, <laughs> here's my phone number if anyone wants to help me get over uh, this uh, this terrible affliction. Uh, but, the, <laughs> uh, but the thing is, is that, you know what, he's a, you know, by U.S. law, he's a criminal felon. I uh, can't, by English law, he seems to have gotten away with it. They don't have the same securities laws we have. He fabricated news reports. Most people would never be allowed on the air. And for CNN or, or uh, to allow a guy who's been caught again and again, literally making up the news, making it up, faking it, and using it to enrich, uh, line his own pocket. Um, I'm just stunned at the, you know, I, I once said that when American mainstream media needs a new uh, TV host, a new news anchor, they just wait for a toilet to overflow, and they got him. You know, and it's just unbelievable. Is that the best America could find? Is this guy who, if he goes back to England, will be immediately clamped in irons, by the way, because he was involved in wiretapping phones. It's, a, it's all against, you can't wiretap Well, they've phones. already arrested, what is it, like 10 people? It was five more last week, his all, underlings. You know what, all the people around him, all the people around him. And he even admits that he heard he listened in on private phone conversations because they hacked into people's answering machine, including Sir Paul McCartney. I know exactly how he did it. I'm not going to I can't reveal, but I know exactly the method he used um, from my BBC television show. Our investigators know exactly how he how you did it, Pierce. I know exactly. And we will reveal that as soon as you get close enough to your to sunny England to be arrested. Then we'll reveal it. We know how you did it. He's listening. It's creepy. You know, it's creepy. It, and it's illegal, by the way. It's quite illegal. I, You know, he jumped whenever I found out he was at a big gun place in Houston. They told me. So I, so they let me into the green room and I walked up and he actually jumped when he saw me. It was really funny. <laughs> you know, these guys, you know, it's and so it's it's unfortunately, unfortunately, suddenly he's clothing himself as the guy protecting our little children from getting shot in schools. Police. This guy is. He's a threat to the moral character. Oh, yeah, movement. that's like the Bushes, Prescott Bush, after he got caught running the Nazi banks, they created the USO right as he was about to be arrested with all the others, but they did that. So they said, well, we can't arrest him. He just started this thing for the troops. Yeah, so you know, look, it's, it's fun in circuits, and what's terrible about it is that 
somehow they say Alex Jones is, is a wild man. And yet Piers Morgan, who's, who's, who does nothing but the Britney, he says his dream, his dream interview would be Britney Spears. Excuse me, I want to vomit. But anyway, I don't mind. You want to interview Britney Spears? Fine, Mr. Morgan. Just do it from the prison cell that's waiting for you in London. And it's getting a lot closer. Uh, I mean, how can all his underlings go to jail and admit they've been doing this, but he doesn't get in trouble? You have to. I mean, the English system is so class poisoned. And plus, don't forget, Alex, remember I said he lined his pockets with ins from inside information. I want to know, Mr. Morgan, who else, who in government, who in MI6, who, who in the establishment did you also pass off these tips to? Who else traded on this inside information with you? And is that why you've been protected? Well, we know it's come out the Metropolitan Police were in it. Yeah, we know that. I mean, they, they straight up briberies to, to the police. I mean, it's unbelievable. But anyway, let's, you know, but I did. Yeah, yeah we're going to break. Let's uh, uh, Take us out to break. 30 seconds. What's going on in Cyprus with the bank accounts disappearing? Uh, wholesale thievery. But what they're doing in Cyprus, they're doing in New York, too, but in a much subtler way. Much subtler, but it's just as evil, just as bad. There's no way. That, believe me. And I have the documents. I know you always do. Welcome back. Greg Palace is our guest with breaking analysis. Total insider uh, when it comes to understanding the banking fraud and what's happening. I want to look at Cyprus, uh, the Cypriot people of Cyprus. I want to look at uh, the global financial meltdown that's impossible to stop. They designed it to take over the whole planet. And then look at the fraud going on. I'm going to guess he's talking about flash trading. And why did J.P. Morgan Chase for two and a half hours, zero account balance, everybody? which a glitch can't do, folks. That stuff's all compartmentalized. And there's backup systems. We'll get Greg's take on that if I'm wrong or right. Uh, Greg Palace, please continue. Okay. Uh, first of all, people should know that if you don't know Greg Palace, I am a reporter for BBC television. But before I became a journalist, I was an investigator, Justice Department and racketeering fraud expert. But I actually got my degree in economics studying under Milton Friedman at the University of Chicago, of all things. So you went to school around the real elite of this whole system. I was I was the only American in what is known as the Chicago Boys group. I was in with these. Uh, I studied under six Nobel Prize winners. And I and one of them, by the way, is a guy named Bob Mundell. He is known as the father of the euro. He invented the Europa. Now, the euro, the euro as, they, as you originally called it, the euro was not was not invented by Europeans. It was not meant to be a competitive uh, currency to the uh, uh, to the dollar. What it was meant instead was to be something which would. And let me tell you, I'm quoting Mundell. I'm quoting the father of the year. No, he's on record. He said it was to take over countries. <laughs> it was it was meant to eliminate the power of elected congresses and parliaments to regulate uh, industry. It would smash, uh, you know, it would smash the uh, the powerful unions. It would end any type of of environmental regulation. And it now appoints the presidents of major countries and right. exempts itself from the laws. It is a tyranny. So what he said was, is look, we have to take, and he told me this. I have, by the way, even tape recorded some of our conversations. Uh, that's what I used to do. I was always undercover even then as a young guy. He said, look, we have to take away the power of parliaments to set fiscal policy, to set monetary policy. If we do that and we impose this regime, then there is no vote of any parliament that can have any effect whatsoever uh, on controlling industry. Um, and therefore... The only thing you can do is reduce wages, cut regulations, and 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 I don't mean regulations like you know that that regulator civil liberties. He's talking about cutting regulations that. And here's the issue: they sell it like the corporations would create a utopia, but the truth is they just shut down their competition. They right. they are the opposite of free market, while blaming the now the free market's being blamed for their piratical looting. Right. So it's, it's piracy, and so what's happening is in Cyprus is and is that. Uh, you have a bunch of billions and billions of dollars in Russian mobster money and looted money, bribery money, hot money has gone out of Russia and put into Cyprus, which was made part of the Eurozone. This money then became, is basically just a money laundering island. The money went from Cyprus out into Greece and other places by so the mobster money can make it then jump over to Switzerland. So let me guess. So now the top gangsters know there's smaller gangsters there as well. This is just Don Carleone demanding a cut right off the top. And while he's at it, take everything from maids and people and, and right. school teachers. So what happened is, is that the, the, the Cypriot banks, the, the little elite that was handling the hot Russian 
um, dirty money, of course, got their skim and they gambled it all away uh, in Greece. And then uh, bigger sharks, uh, particularly a guy named Paul Singer. We need to know who these guys are. They're not just sharks in general. They have names. Paul Singer, multi-billionaire. Romney's biggest backer, by the way, and his business partner, Romney's business partner, has a fund called Elliott Management. Elliott Management went to Greece and said, uh, we're going to burn this country down unless you pay us 100 times. I want to repeat that 100 times that we paid for the Greek for Greek bonds. The Greek government paid, st- had to steal it from the Cypriot bankers. Now the Cypriot bankers are busted. They're about to go under. So the European Union hold secret meetings with the IMF, with the president of Cyprus, uh, Greek Cyprus, locked in a hotel room on the fifth floor of a hotel. I kid you not, I can't make this stuff up. Locked in the fifth floor of a hotel room and told, we're going to tell you what you're going to sign off on. And you're going to sign off on sucking money out of the average... Stay there. Let's get into this. This is so incredible. Remember, they're not just taking other gangsters' money. They're taking school teachers, retired cops, auto mechanics, just taking their money... And our media says it's good. When it comes to financial news and the inside scoops, uh, this guy's worked, you know, still uh, ABC Nightly News, Nightline, top, BBC Newsnight, their top show, uh, London Guardian, Observer. I mean, he knows where the bodies are buried. And he doesn't just say this stuff. He doesn't just get up here and throw this stuff out there. Uh, and he's nonpartisan. He just calls it like it is. And... Uh, I briefly want to ask him before he gets back into Cyprus and all the rest of it. Hugo Chavez, I know you've met him, interviewed him, know him. I get the fact that that as strongmen go, he wasn't like, you know, super nasty like Fidel Castro or something. I get compared to a Hitler, he was he was an angel. And I know being close to somebody, you know, when the devil's got his arm around you, you know, you, you don't recognize it's the devil to quote Albert Speer, you know, the German uh, armaments minister. But... Uh, I understand the globalists are horrible and evil and, 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 and are much more sophisticated, but I know people from there who, you know, the communists basically, he says he wasn't a communist, I say he was, a socialist, taking property, you know, taking small family businesses. I mean, obviously he had a dark side too. Uh, your eulogy or, 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 or your statement on Hugo Chavez briefly. Okay, I knew Hugo Chavez very well for more than a decade. We, we uh, met many times. Um, and, you know, I but on the other hand, I had a lot of disagreements with him and I got in his face quite a bit. Uh, one thing I don't like to do is become friends with any politician because uh, that's dangerous stuff. I'm not Brian Williams having dinner with the president. That makes me vomit. So I'm not going to do that with Chavez. But what you have to understand with Chavez, he was an elected leader, unlike Castro, who is, who is you know, a dictator who rules purely by the gun. And uh, that's. You know, Chavez was elected. But Chavez is cozying up to him was, I mean, I think that's what, because I remember, I mean, I wasn't. The thing is, is that the important thing is that he stood up against the new global order. He said, you're not going to take our oil for nothing. He's not going to give away the oil to the Koch brothers for nothing. By the way, the Koch brothers are his main customers at the Flint Hills refinery in Houston, uh, uh, outside Corpus Christi. He wasn't going to give the Koch brothers free oil. He wasn't going to give away all the money that comes down for oil that used to go to Miami that was skimmed by the rich. So he basically said he was Robin Hood. He was Robin like FDR. He said, I'm going to take from the rich who've run this country forever and I'm going to give it to the poor. They've never gotten the oil money. Now they'll get it. When I went to Caracas in 1976, the first oil boom, poor people, a million people lived in cardboard shacks. Those cardboard shacks don't aren't there anymore. Chavez replaced it with bricks and mortars and buildings, education, health care, you know. Um, so you, know, you could I, say when it comes to redistribution, which has always been a disaster, he is one of the only cases where it wasn't an absolute nightmare. He was the case where he, first of all, he didn't do it with guns. And they don't have Guantanamo. They don't have Bradley Manning in prison. None of that stuff. They're no, no, I guys. hear you. I, I just don't say you know, he's a good guy because we're run by bad guys. I don't, you know, I don't just automatically no, say, I, go ahead. The big thing about Chavez, and by the way, for Alex Jones listeners, uh, my BBC film, The Assassination of Hugo Chavez, I am offering for free. If you go to gregpalace.com, you can download it for nothing because I want people to at least get the other side of the story and meet Chavez. And by the way, I meet with the guys who kidnapped him. He was kidnapped in 2002 by the head of the Chamber of Commerce. Talk about a corporate takeover. 
And the U.S. ambassador ran down to have his picture taken with the kidnappers while they're holding elected president hostage. You know how that looked to the rest of Latin America? Well, listen, it's promise like me this, then. When you come back next week, to, and we'll do a whole hour on, on, on your perspective on Hugo Chavez. Oh, I would love to. And it could be with your commercials. I find them informative, Alex. I don't mind your commercials. Oh, especially the squatty potty. But the point is, the point is, the point is, is that I want to get you on the news about the financial stuff. I want to get you on the radio yep. back about Chavez because I want to really explore from somebody who actually was down there. How many times did you go to Venezuela? Oh, at least a half. To, I mean, I've been down to Latin America several dozen times. I met not only with the president of, of Venezuela, Chavez, but with the presidents of Ecuador, Brazil, uh, you know, all, all of them. That's my job. But I also with the people who kidnap them. I mean, with the people who've taken- Yeah, we're going to have you back on about that in the three minutes we've got left or four minutes. Shift back to, uh, on record, the, the, the private bureaucracy with the bank heads meets yes. with the Cypriot leaders in Cyprus, and they tell them this is how it's going to be. 10% out of everybody's bank account to set a new incredible precedent. Even the head of the former head of the exchequer said, this will blow up Europe. But I guess they want to blow it up yes. to then consolidate it again. Yes. This is the shock doctrine. Yes. Um, and what happened was Christine Lagarde, who's head of the IMF, panicked. She said, we're going to have a, a, um, an international bank run if you do that. Why can't you take a few dollars from the bank owners? They're the ones that, that took all the hot money, blew it away, don't they? And she said, at least make them lose a few percentage uh, points of their stock in these banks. And they said, no. The ECB, the Germans said, no way. Because who is really behind these Cypriot guys? It's the Germans who own the bank stock. So he said, we're not taking a penny loss, guys. We're taking it right out of the account. She said, you can't. And they said, you can't take it out of the accounts of, of the pensions of working people. And they said, yeah, that's what we're taking out. She said, make it 30% on, on the Russians and the rich, the ultra rich. And, and you know, 2%, nothing on anyone over on, uh, with a small account. They wouldn't do it. And there's a reason. They want the explosion. When I talked to the former chief economist of the World Bank, Stiglitz. Joe Stiglitz, he and I both lectured in economics at London School of Economics. And he said, we called them the IMF riots. They want the riots because if there's a riot, they can then call in the troops, impose martial law, and then name the so-called technocrat from you know Goldman Sachs or J.P. Morgan who will run the country. He says, the riot is written into the plan. I want to repeat that phrase. The riot is written into the plan. And that's your article that's in my book from 2002. You've been breaking it down before that. I mean, this is part of their plan. This all got leaked. They do the same plan over and over again. You know, I, I showed the documents to Stiglitz. He, but I want to make it very clear. He never gave me the confidential documents. He only verified them. I said, my God, it looks like they're actually saying we want a riot so you can move in and, and, and impose this, these regimes. He said, that's exactly right. That It's part of the deal. It's the IMF riot. It's written right into the plan, the riot. And so then they could, then the repression falls, the riot. And so here's my question. And then, get, and, and then uh, the, the stocks go down. They can buy everything. up. Everything falls apart for six months. Then they come in and pose as the saviors, bringing in total austerity. And by the way, one thing I did see also, in, uh, if you go to greatpalace.com and you get votes, whatever, they... Cyprus, Greek Cyprus, is surrounded, surrounded by massive pools of oil and natural gas, which have been virtually untouched. That's what they want. They're going to get that. That's going to be the, that's going to be the final payment. And what are the Russians going to do with their area they control of Cyprus? Well, what, uh, the, there's the northern Greek part. So what happened is actually to play them off, the, the president, the, the prime minister of Cyprus just flew to Moscow to basically offer the Russians the big oil fields offshore as a way to try to maybe counter the, the Europeans. But hey, no, they've lost it. It's going to go to the Russians, or it's going to go to the Germans, or it's going to go to... So to it's just like the beginning of World War II or, or, or a few years into it, whenever you've got uh, Hitler and, and the uh, Russians dividing Poland, they're just there carving up Cyprus. I mean, this is incredible. What about the precedent to just come into bank accounts and scoop money out? Well, this is, this is incredible. That you just literally, because remember, the European Union also has, just like we have in the Federal Reserve, you have a guaranteed bank account, right? We have a 250,000, they had 100,000 euro uh, absolute guarantee. And the guys who are supposed to guarantee the sanctity of your account are the guys who actually took the money. Can you imagine? They just go in and say, oh, 10%, jump. And these are not the people that did this. The bankers, and the bankers didn't lose a penny. The money was given to them. And so... In a way, we do it in a more sophisticated manner. That is, Bernanke 
uh, crushes down interest that you receive to zero. You get a quarter of 1% in your bank accounts. You get next to nothing in your bank accounts. The money is lent to the banks at a quarter percent by the Federal Reserve. And then the Federal Reserve borrows it back as Treasury bills at 3%. Well, they literally handed out trillions of dollars at a quarter percent, borrowed it back at 3%. Well, that's a nice deal. Let me in on that. Why can't I get that deal? So we do it here, but in a much more subtle manner. There, I think they wanted to put it in people's faces. They wanted to say they wanted to push that riot. They want to kick the system over. They call it uh, the guys I worked with at Chicago came up with this system. Uh, there was a professor there, a philosopher named Joseph Schumpeter, and he believed in what they called creative destruction. It's kind of apocalyptic. In other words, if you bring the whole order down, you can recreate a brand new, fresh. That's right. If you're in control of a multinational thing above it, you implode the subunits, order out of chaos. Listen, that is the shock doctrine, which you, of course, have exposed for so long. Let's set you back up next week on the Chavez situation for an hour to really delve into that. And then let's get you on the nightly news. I'm going to let you talk to my uh, producers here in just a moment. Or should I have one of the producers call you? I uh, have anyone call me and uh, Greg Palace dot com, Jerry G P A L A S T. For at least a week, I'm going to keep up. And while you're having me on talk about Chavez, you can download that BBC film uh, for no charge. Thank you, Greg. All right. You're very interesting.